now, here are the men who will be running in the 10,000 meters. Craig Virgin of the USA, the American record holder, set the new record in the AAU competition at Walnut, California. Werner Schildhauer of East Germany. Edward Vincent of the Asian team from India. Peter Butler of the Americas team from Canada. John Frase of Europe from Ireland. Mirat Yifter, the African team member from Ethiopia. Alexander Antipov from the Soviet Union. And Gerard Barriott of Oceania and Australia. Marty LaCroix. Well, it's a good field, and uh, Virgin has proved over the last three months that he's now a world-class athlete, but he's uh, saddled with the problem that's hit many distance runners before him, and that his leg speed is uh, is not up to the standards of someone like Gifter, who can run uh, a last lap in a five or 10,000 meters in 53 seconds. Craig right now is... Uh, able to do about uh, 58 seconds. He ran 61 seconds in his uh, American record about two months ago. Uh, so it's a, the oldest story in the book, years, which is not something that's been done very often. However, cross country is a sport which is involving running up hills. In the last championship in Ireland, it was uh, involving a lot of running in the mud. So he's a very strong man, but, but uh, like Craig Virgin, he's not really uh, as fast as some of the other runners on the kick. So he's going to probably help Virgin out a little bit and try and force the pace. It, it's a very uh, discouraging thing for the other seven runners in the race to know that if Yifter is on their shoulder... The United States women by a point and the Soviet women by two. Well, Craig Virgin said he wouldn't want the pace to go slower than 67, and he just tried to pick it up. He just led through about a 65-second lap, and now he's trying desperately to give up the lead. He's moved out to the second lane and is slowing down, forcing Tracy to go in the lead. Tracy's not going to have anything of it, as you can see by Yifter's stride. They're just about jogging. Alexander Antipov is holding to the number four spot. Nobody has really dropped off the pace as yet. Even uh, Barrett of Oceania, who at one time had moved up into the number three position, now dropping back to the last position, but he too appears to be running rather easily at a very moderate pace. So apparently the strategy that Craig Virgin had is not applicable unless he himself applies. Now apparently, apparently it's up to him to make the move. We'll keep our eye on the 10,000 meter run with 16 laps to go and Craig Virgin leading the United States. Right now, let's consider the discus. It's upcoming and one of the featured performers will be Mac Wilkins of the United States. So let's meet Mac up close and personal. When last up in the pack, Gerard Barrett of Oceania and Australia has lost contact. Craig Virgin continues to lead. Mirat Shifter right on his shoulder. Alexander Antipov of the Soviet Union is running third. Uh, Werner Schildhauer has moved up to the number four spot. And right now, Peter Butler of Canada and the America's team has passed John Tracy to move into number five. Well, Virgin is starting to take uh, some control of the race now. He's run about three laps that have stretched out the field, and it's just he and Gifter now with Antipop, who uh, was also one of the favorites, about 20 yards off. They're almost to the halfway point. They've got about another 100 yards to go, and right now it looks like Craig is going to be running about uh, 12 seconds or so off of his American record pace. And really in a big competition like this or any competition that a person's pointing for you can't expect them to do much more than equal their best time so we have to think that if he's running uh, close to his uh, record pace then he's going to be in there towards the end of the race it's now groups of twos and then a couple of ones with craig virgin and yifter one two that's the united states and africa ethiopia then you have Antipop of the Soviet Union, Shield Hour of East Germany. You have Peter Butler of Canada and John Tracy of uh, Oceania. Uh, no, uh, John Tracy is a uh, Europe, European team. Oceania, Gerard Barrett from Australia and trailing the field from the very beginning has been Edward Benson from India running for the Asian team. But it's two, 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 one and one. I don't think it'll end up a two-man race, though, Keith. They're strung up, they're strung out now, but Virgin seems to be applying pressure and then cutting back on it a little bit. And uh, I think that the uh, Russian Antipop and uh, Peter George uh, can get back in the race. They both have some uh, fairly decent finishing kicks also. 
Peter Jorg was just second to uh, to Yifter in the last World Cup. Right now, it's Virgin Yifter, 1-2 in the men's 10,000, and we'll be right back. A little move as we come back to the 10,000 meters. Virgin literally broke his stride and forced Yifter to go past him. So now, all of a sudden, Craig's got somebody to look at as he forced Yifter to take the lead. Well, that's like a man getting ready to commit suicide. He's like a man getting ready to commit suicide and then deciding, here, you hold the gun and shoot me. Yifter is not going to take the pace, Craig. He's, he's, he's just going to slow it down, and you're going to have to take it back, and I would guess that Virgin will do it within side of a lap. The only thing he can possibly do is maybe confuse Yifter. He's looking around. Uh, I've never really seen anybody do that in a meet of this caliber. Craig was trying to spurt for 150 yards or so. He'd open up a five-yard lead, and then Yifter would be right back on him. Like sitting with a short view. Right now, let's join Jim Lampley as he talks with Edwin Moses. Thanks, Coming to do it. And uh, Craig Virgin is still literally forcing uh, Murat Yifter to hold the lead in the men's 10,000. Well, certainly the, the pace isn't going to be fast with Yifter uh, leading, but Craig has said earlier that with 8,000 meters gone in the race, meaning about uh, a mile and a quarter left, that he would start a long drive. They still have about a mile and three quarters to go, so he's going to have to try the one tactic left to him, and that is a long, long, drawn-out sprint. Well, that may be it right there, and it's uh, come early if that in fact is it, but each time he tries to put on a spurt, Yifter just sort of shifts gear and just cruises right in behind it. Well, you know, Virgin is just, uh, he's hanging in there. Uh, physically, it's not as demanding to run uh, these spurts and everything, but psychologically, one of these spurts, Yifter might, just might not go with him. Greg might see 10 or 20 yards behind him and just keep on going. But I'm not going to bet on it. That, however, seemed a very unlikely thing to me, knowing this fellow's history, because he is remarkable. We know that he's 32 years of age. We suspect he might be a little older than that. 10,000 meter goes on. We'll be back. Laps to go as they run through the first turn, and there's no appreciable change except Virgin and Yifter are pulling away from Antipov and uh, Peter Butler of the Americas team. And now into the lead. That is uh, just a man asking uh, for somebody to help him toward suicide, and he has not been able to do anything with Yifter. Yifter has been right flat in his shadow. As they come now to the finish line, there will be four laps to go in the men's 10,000-meter run, and uh, Yifter is right in the shadow of Craig Virgin. Earlier in talking strategy with Craig Virgin, Jim Lampley asked him what he planned to do with four laps to go if he's still in contention. This is how he answered. Well, I think there'll probably be about a group of about three of us together there. And I think that hopefully the pace will have been quick, but if it's not quick, I better be out front and leading. And I better be pushing as hard as I can. There better be no slower than 66s. And I better be starting to put the pressure on people with four laps to go. And with two laps to go, I better start a longer kick because I think some of these guys have definitely uh, faster leg speed in the last straightaway than I do. I'm going to have to know myself and be able to judge uh, just how much I have left to be able to turn, turn it on against guys like John Tracy and Myra Shifter. And I hope that at that point, uh, a lot of them will be tired also, and it'll be a, more of a strength race at that point than sheer speed. If you're looking over your shoulder for one man, is it Yifter of Ethiopia? I'm more worried about him the last lap than anyone else. Now, Antipov and Tracy both have strong last laps, but they're more within my range than what Yifter is. Yifter can turn a 53 or 54 second last lap. He's done it before, and he can do it again. Uh, I think off of, a, off of a strong, fast pace throughout the whole race, he isn't quite as fast to be in, and that's the only hope that I have to, you know, of, of winning this race is to have that kind of a race. Well, those were the thoughts of Craig Virgin before the race started. And right now, the only thing wrong with his strategy is that he has not been able to shake Yifter. And Edward Vincent is going to be lapped by the two leaders. They're moving up on him right now as they have three laps to go. And now he is running in the number three position with Peter Butler of the Americas and Canada out of Edmonton running in the number four spot. And Gerard Barrett of Oceania and Australia running in the number five position. Now, here we come to two laps to go. And let's see if Craig Virgin spins it right here. 
Well, with four laps to go, Craig ran a 67, which is about the same that the, as the pace uh, has been all through the race, uh, a little bit faster, but certainly not starting any type of a drive. He's probably going to go with two laps uh, left, which shouldn't be enough to drop Yifter. Uh, he's, he's running well this year. Craig has the second fastest time in the world this year, uh, the fastest time of anyone in this race, but when you get into a competitive situation, and as this was, where there were only eight men in the race, no pace setters, no rabbits, as uh, there are in many world record races, someone to share the pace, it's just man against man, it's been very tough for Craig. Yeah, uh, Craig Virgin, uh, within the week, ran a tough road race up at Falmouth, Mass. Did that take something out of him? Well, the, the pounding of the roads, he ran a seven-mile road race, a very good time, would certainly uh, take something out of his legs. However, the pace in this race has not been up to his total physical capabilities. He hasn't uh, pushed the pace, so uh, that, that hasn't been a factor, I think. This has come down to a tactical thing, and... Uh, now it's up to one lap to go, and Win Yifter wants to make his move, if in fact he can make a move. They're coming up on Tracy now, and Shieldhauer, Tracy moves outside to give the leadership the lead. Shieldhauer should do the same thing to give the two front runners uh, the room to work at it. Here goes Yifter, just flew right by him. I would say uh, in this last 300 yards, Yifter is probably going to open up 50 yards on Virgin. Uh, he has that type of a kick. Incredible. We know he's 32. Every time we've seen him run, he has pulled this kind of thing. He has just simply blown Craig Virgin away. Virgin was not able to shake him at any time, not able to disturb the poise of the Ethiopian. And now he's running as if the devil is after him, furiously pounding to the finish line all alone. Wins big, the 10,000 leader. Virgin is second. Antipat will come on sometime later to finish third. He ran a 54-2 last lap. Well, that's uh, that's fast. That's uh, equal to many of his races. And Yifter, we're looking at the type of an athlete who's going to stand a chance in winning in an Olympic Games because unless you can come up with a, a